bushy tail for your ass. <laughs> anyway, you'll end up with a little bit nicer or a little bit more finished looking dress plant if you simply round off the corners on your foil as you start. Now, <coughs> the other thing I love about our poinsettias, we pay a little bit more for them, but if you've never noticed, they have this little plastic stand around them that holds them up. They are not nearly as fragile as a lot of poinsettias are. Still wouldn't do to drop them, but to dress with a piece of foil like that, I simply set the poinsettia toward the middle of the foil. Try to choose what's going to be a natural front. I'm going to pick this pretty much as a natural front. And I'm going to begin by drawing the foil up, just kind of crimping it right in the center. That's another good thing about that type of foil he's talking about. It, when you crimp it, it stays crimped. Mm -hmm. it, if you're trying to use wrapping paper or something like that, it doesn't stay put and it's a real pain to work with. This is excellent because it stays where you put it. And what I will do is just kind of gather the foil a little bit all the way around. even this out just a little bit in a moment, but we've, we've brought it up so it's pretty much covering the pot. Then we're going to take and if in doubt, leave a little bit extra here. You can always cut it off. You can cut off a shorter piece of ribbon or a longer piece of ribbon but you can't make a piece that's too short any longer. So allow just a little margin until you're real used to what you're doing. And this is the thing I learned from my grandmother. You're, of course, just going to loop the ribbon through here. But if I pulled it tight, it might or might not stay in place. If I loop it through here a second time, then when I pull it tight, it tends to stay there much better. So then I'll just knock this off. I should have made my uh, bowl with the wire out of the red. We'll make another bowl real quickly, just to review. We're going to keep the shiny side out. What was the name of the paper again? They call it Plastifoil. Is probably the most common brand. P L S T A S T I. But just look at it. It's real easy to. This over to her. You can really tell which one yeah, is the yeah, plastic coat nice, or the plastic. It's nice and heavy compared to just the standard foil of the paper. If you've ever compared that with just a pure aluminum foil, you just look at the aluminum, just look at it wrong and it rips and tears at every potential angle. And where do you get that? Um, I'm sure you can buy it at you know, places like Michael's. Uh, actually, here in San Antonio, Travis Wholesale Florist. Somebody that walks through the door, and uh, they generally have a wide of colors. If you wait until a week before Christmas, the one color they will not have is red. So if you're going to shop for your coils and things, shop early. Shop early. I don't know if the container store carries this kind of color or not. But, uh, Thank you. The nice thing about the floral supply like that is they have a wider range of sizes. You can usually find a standard, like a 20 inch, just about anywhere, but some of the larger sizes you'll have more trouble finding. Mm -hmm. well, one other thing I should have shown you, but um, if you're dressing plants that you know are likely to sit on nice furniture or things like that, little plastic plant saucers like Donna put in whichever one of these uh, baskets we're working on. And just a little, um, you can take and put the little plastic plant saucer underneath the pot. <coughs> Actually, this is, of course is eight inch. You put right, a six inch one underneath here. Yeah, a six inch would be appropriate for what he's You can there. trim the edge of those off if you need to and then put the foil up over that saucer and everything and uh, sometimes avoid problems. basic red bow on a pick. We're just going to insert that through that loop right there. 
and voila, mm -hmm. what the florist charges you $25 for, you can do for a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. And what size of wrapping stuff? This is, is 20 the inch, the narrow, I think this is 20 inch. Uh, this one is 24, and then they also make one that's either 28 or 30. It's 30 for the big um, But again, bows are easy to make, and they just dress things up so much. See how, what a difference mm -hmm. that little bow made on there. Mm -hmm. See what a difference this green bow makes, you know, with this uh, near jelly mm -hmm. sitting down in the pot. Just kind of finishes it. Yeah, it just uh, is, is a real nice touch, and... Again, the ribbon is not very expensive when you buy a whole roll of it, and uh, you make oh, really dress things up very nicely. Put bows around your house. I know that uh, you know we've taken and done bows and tie them on table legs, put them up on the mantel. You can use outdoor ribbon, and if you have columns or banisters or something like that around your house, go put a big festive red bow in the middle of each one. Ribbon is one of the most inexpensive things you can use to decorate unless you get the real fancy varieties. And yet there is nothing that shows up more from a distance. If my house was closer to the road or something or other and I wanted to show it off, uh, I have a balcony around, you know, three sides of my house upstairs with, the, you know, little white balusters all the way through. We'll put a big red bow in the middle between each column. It just is amazing how, how much more festive it looks. And there's just so many neat things you can do. I mean, you can go out in the country and gather grapevine and just, you know, roll up a big wad of grapevine, put a big red bow in the middle of it, and you have something that the florist would charge you an immense amount of money for that you can do at virtually no cost if you like. Mm -hmm. You can put bows on your Christmas tree if you don't have to use, uh, you know, you can do a beautiful Christmas tree with using little tiny red, red and green or red and white bows. It's just gorgeous. There's a lot you can do. Do you want to talk a little bit about points out of care? I guess we might. Um, <coughs> Two or three things about poinsettias to tell how fresh a poinsettia is, and you always want to buy fresh poinsettias. The red, of course, is not the flower. The red is just a modified leaf, what we call a bract. The flower on the poinsettia is right here in the center of the bracts. Mm -hmm. And on these, of course, they're basically buds. Eventually, they open up. This one doesn't really have any open yet but open out to kind of a yellow, almost fuzzy looking flower, still an okay thing. They'll, as they put out the stamen, they'll take on a distinctly almost fuzzy look. Eventually, the whole flower falls out of the middle and just leaves the bracts behind. At that point, that's not a real fresh plant. Um, and you know, look for yourself when you look around at poinsettias that are offered for sale. Get the freshest one that you possibly can. Poinsettias like a lot of light. Uh, keep them in a sunny window. If you want to put them elsewhere for decorating, that's fine. But let them spend their days in the sunny window, and before the guests show up, move them over to the table or, you know, wherever you plan to use them. But let them spend the majority of their time in a place that they get good, bright light. Don't ever let them get dry. If you let them dry out completely, they will drop lots of leaves. Water them thoroughly when they're dry on the surface. If the inevitable happens and they get too dry and they drop a bunch of leaves, go over to the base of your Christmas tree and snip off a few of the little lower limbs and stick them down in there around the base. And then it'll look like something other than bare stems sticking up out of the box. Or you can take it and put it in a container with ferns and other things to kind of camouflage that but yet still get the look of the poinsettia. Mm -hmm. and keep them out of real hot or real cold drafts. Just keep them where the heat vent is not blowing on them. Typically, when you start with a good poinsettia, they'll last minimum until Valentine's Day. We frequently have people call us about Mother's Day and say, I'm really tired of this thing. Can I throw it out now? It's still pretty, but I just don't want it anymore. Start with a good fresh plant and care for it, and they will last a long, long time. The old myth is that poinsettias are highly uh, poisonous. It is an old myth. They are not. I'm not going to do like that old idiot Jerry Parr 